Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for my final video of 2018. In the new year, I'll be releasing new Bon Appetit recipe test videos every single Wednesday. So if you haven't already, now is a great time to click subscribe. So for my final video of 2018, I'm doing something a little bit different. Today is actually a retest of a video I shot the day before Thanksgiving. Molly made these amazing looking corn muffins and when I saw them, I knew that I wanted them on my Thanksgiving dinner table. So the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, I was making the muffins at nighttime, being a responsible adult, and they were a complete fail. And at first I was like, this recipe is defective. And then I thought, well, I did go a little bit rogue. So I have three variables that I'm adjusting this go round. First, I thought, you know, I'm gonna convert the uh, measured cups into grams, and that way it'll just be a little bit more precise and it'll turn out even better. Well, you cannot do that. Two, I'm going to be using fresh corn instead of frozen corn. I thought, well, you know, frozen is probably just as good. That is completely wrong. For corn, frozen is not just as good. For some things, yes, but corn, no. And then the third variable is how I greased the muffin tins. So I had a real sticking problem before Thanksgiving because I rubbed the, the muffin tins with olive oil rather than spraying the pan. So today I'm going to be using sprayed on vegetable oil. So that's what I'm trying. Let's see how it goes. A link to the recipe and ingredient quantities are in the description box below. So the technique I'm using was what they demonstrated in the Bon Appetit video. You could also just lie the ear of corn on a cutting board and run a paring knife along the edge. You are looking for two cups of corn kernels. A cup and a half to add into the batter and half a cup to sprinkle over the top. You want to use a bowl much larger than you need for the dry ingredients. I should have used something a little bit larger because you're going to add the wet ingredients and the corn into this bowl. And now I'm just coarsely cracking a teaspoon and a half of black pepper. With all the dry ingredients in the bowl, I'm just thoroughly whisking to get everything combined. You really don't want to overwork the muffin batter once the wet ingredients are added, so you want this to be thoroughly mixed. And once thoroughly mixed, you just want to stir through the kernels of corn so that they're coated in flour. This will prevent them from sinking to the bottom of the muffins. Now I'm just going to prepare the wet ingredients. So I'm whisking together the eggs, the sour cream, and the milk. And then once that's pretty homogenous, I'm just going to stream in the butter, whisking continuously. At this part, it's important that the melted butter has cooled down to about room temperature. You don't want to stir hot butter into the mixture or it could cook the eggs. So now I'm just adding the wet ingredients to the dry and then trying to thoroughly mix in my undersized bowl. So um, this is why you want to use something larger than what I did. So you want to thoroughly mix, but you don't want to overwork it. So if it's a little bit dry, that's okay. Um, you're really just looking for it to be mostly combined. I've got my muffin tin thoroughly sprayed with vegetable oil and now I'm just using spoons to scoop the batter in. It should be about a third of a cup per muffin. And now I'm just dividing that half cup of corn kernels amongst the 12 muffin tins. There's no set amount to put on each one and a half cup was plenty to get a really thorough coating on the top of each muffin. And the final finishing touch is just sprinkling with flaky sea salt. So these will bake for 18 to 20 minutes, rotating halfway through. Mine ended up being in for the full 20. You can check their doneness just by sticking a toothpick or a cake tester into the center of one of the muffins and it should come out clean. I let these cool for five minutes in the pan, but you do want to let them finish cooling on a cooling rack. And this is the finished product. You can eat them plain or top them with honey butter. All right, so I let the muffins cool. I think I'm ready to break into this. So far, I'm feeling very optimistic. The texture of the batter was much better than the previous time I made this. The height that I got on the muffins while they were baking is much better, and they all came out of the tin, so <laughs> that's a huge plus there. So um, this is what the muffin looks like. So nice golden color on the edges. It got a lot of caramelization. Beautiful corn all over the top. All right, so let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Oh my gosh. The corn is so crispy in there and there's the, the little crunch of the flaky sea salt. This is fantastic. 
All right, so that was probably the best corn muffin I've ever had. The texture of it was fantastic. It was nice and tender without being overly crumbly. Breaking it open and seeing the whole kernels of corn and the black pepper and then the flaky sea salt on top kind of falling off. It was absolutely the most aesthetically pleasing corn muffin I've probably ever seen uh, next to Molly's. It was just delicious. So I am so excited that I have 11 more of these. This time versus the previous time I made these, fresh corn makes all the difference in the world so if you can't find fresh corn just skip this recipe because it is not worth it at all using frozen corn and in terms of risk this is a really low risk recipe it's all normal pantry items the cornmeal and fresh corn might be things that you need to buy specifically for this recipe but they're not very expensive and they're readily accessible at most grocery stores so i would absolutely recommend this recipe to you if you tried this recipe, please let me know how it goes. I would love to see your pictures, so be sure to tag me in your post on Instagram. So I hope you have a happy new year, and I'll see you next week.